Welcome to Boardfish. After years of frustration using off-the-shelf software, we finally decided to make a standalone page layout application specifically for the purpose of storyboarding. Whether you create your panels by drawing, shooting photos, creating 3D models, or designing UX wireframes, Boardfish can be used to quickly assemble the panels into a professional storyboard page layout. When the Boardfish application is opened, a default grid view is shown with a message to drop images here. Simply find your thumbnail images in the finder and drag and drop them into the application. When we drag the images into Boardfish, the boards are immediately assembled into a six-up layout in the center of the UI, known as a grid view. On the left of the grid view is the outline view, where frames are sequentially arranged in a linear manner. We can expand the outline view to see the thumbnails larger or shrink it back down to maximize the grid view. The bulk of the work performed in Boardfish occurs in the grid view. The imported thumbnail images sit adjacent to the accompanying text boxes known as captions. We can type directly into the captions text box and use the tab key to quickly jump from caption to caption. Panels are automatically arranged in an alphanumeric order based on the thumbnail's file name in the finder. Panels can easily be rearranged even across pages by dragging and dropping them in both the grid view and the outline view, and all of the panels will reflow as expected. To delete a panel, select the panel and choose Delete from the Edit menu, or simply hit the Delete key on your keyboard. As we all know, clients like to change their mind. So instead of deleting panels permanently, Boardfish gives you the ability to hide panels instead of deleting them. The hidden panels remain in your document's outline view with a red X and can easily be unhidden by control clicking on the thumbnail in the outline view to reveal the contextual menu. Here you will also find shortcuts to commonly used items from the file and edit menu, as well as the ability to change the aspect ratio of the thumbnails in the outline view. On the right of the interface is the inspector panel, consisting of three tabs with all of the settings to customize your boards. The page tab contains settings that define the overall page layout of your boards. The page setup section contains a pop-up for selecting and saving preset layouts. We include a handful of preset layouts for both landscape panels, such as HD video frames, and portrait panels, such as interaction design wireframes for mobile devices. You can save your custom setup into a preset to reuse at a later time for a consistent presentation format, complete with your corporate logo and typeface. The Page Size button opens the standard Mac OS X Page Setup dialog. Besides selecting a printer, this dialog is used to set the document size and aspect ratio used in your Boardfish document. By default, this is set to US letter with a landscape orientation. We can easily change the setup to a tabloid size and your document instantly reformats the panels to fit. You can zoom in and out of the grid view with Command plus and minus on your keyboard and automatically resize the window with Command r The panel layout section allows you to specify the number of horizontal and vertical panels in your grid view. The margins and gutters section allows you to control the spacing along the edge of the page as well as the gaps between the panels. The frame section controls the stroked outlines around your panels. You can display strokes around the captions and or the thumbnail and control the color of the fill and stroke along with the thickness of the stroke. Additionally, a gap can be specified around the thumbnail between the frame by increasing the thumbnail gutter. We provide a dark and light global color scheme. A dark theme works well for digital delivery, while a light theme is more suitable for printing. The color swatches allow for quick global changes to the background and text.
panel tab contains everything related to the settings for individual panels, which consists of thumbnails, captions, and labels. The captions section controls the settings for the captions, which in turn define the sizing of the thumbnails. The placement pop-up controls the location of the captions relative to the thumbnail. By default, it is set to the bottom, but it can be changed to the top, left, or right. You may need to change the panel layout or page size orientation in the page tab to create a layout that works for the left or right placement. The four text fields allow you to customize the caption titles. You can change the names of the default caption titles from one and two to anything you like, such as description and voiceover, and you could add up to four captions per panel by using the checkboxes. The caption font and caption title font buttons allow you to change the font and size for the text, and the adjacent color swatches set the color. The Justify Captions checkbox sets the caption titles to the right, making for a cleaner line breaks when you have longer caption titles. It's always best to choose shorter caption titles to maximize the space in your captions. Additionally, you can have captions without any caption titles by simply removing the caption titles while keeping the checkbox active. The Override Caption checkbox enables a slider below the checkbox. This slider expands the captions vertically for more room to type and in turn shrinks down or expands the area of the thumbnail. By default, the thumbnail scales proportionally down as the caption height is expanded. This behavior can be changed with the fit pop-up, so instead of scaling proportionately, the thumbnail can crop or force into a non-proportionate scale. For the most part, the override caption checkbox should remain off, and Boardfish will find the right caption size based on the panel layout. Increasing the caption gutter value adds a border around the caption's type to give it some breathing room. The baseline offset is used to vertically offset the caption title text and the caption text. This is useful when you're using different fonts which may have disparate default baseline values. The panel labels section contains settings for the labels above the panels. By default, the panel number is enabled, creating a sequential numbering for each panel. Having a unique number above each panel is very useful to communicate with others when discussing your boards. The prefix field can be changed to different nomenclature, such as frame, instead of panel. The panel number font button allows you to change the typeface and size of the panel numbers, and the color swatch allows you to customize the panel number's color. The scene number checkbox adds an additional text field above your panels. When enabled, by default, every panel says scene one. Clicking on this text field in the grid view allows you to change the scene number. The prefix nomenclature can be changed in the inspector from scene to another term, such as shot, along with the font, size, and color. The swap position checkbox will swap the location of the panel number with the scene number above each panel. The baseline offset value allows you to bump the panel labels up or down to move them closer or further away from the panel's frame. The Titles tab allows you to add titles and branding such as headers, footers, and title pages. The Banners sub tab allows you to enable and control the information found at the top or bottom of every page. The first pop-up gives you the option of placing the information on the bottom of the page, known as the footer, or at the top of the page, known as the header. The Banner Height value controls the vertical size of the area used for the header or footer. The banner gutter is used to add more or less vertical spacing between the banner and the closest panels. The banner logo section is used to add an image such as a corporate logo to the banner. Simply drag and drop an image onto the drop zone to import a standard bitmap or vector image. Additionally, you can control click on the drop zone to import or remove a logo. The image scale value allows you to scale your logo up or down to customize the size within the banner. The position pop-up is used to specify the justification of the logo on the right or left side of the page. Banner styles allow you to section off the banner from the panels by using a stroked line or a box. The line's stroke color and size can be customized, as well as the box's fill color. 
The banner text section gives you control over the typography found in the banner. The project name can simply be typed into the text field in the grid view. By default, the checkbox to show the document's page number is set to on, producing sequential numbering for each page. Unchecking this box removes the page number. The page number prefix gives you the ability to change the nomenclature used for the page number. For example, you may want to abbreviate the word page to PG or use the word PAGE with all caps. The margin value is used to bump the logo and type toward the center of the page, which is useful for adding padding when using the box style. When enabled, the Use File Name checkbox will override the project name with the name of the file. This is a great way to make sure that your storyboard's versioning matches the project file's versioning. The Set Font button allows you to set the fonts found in the banner, and the Color Swatch allows you to customize the color. The Baseline Offset value is used to bump the typography up or down in the banner to center up your type. When enabled, the Title Page subtab is used to add a cover page to your document. This allows you to brand your boards with text and an image. The title page margin allows you to add a separate margin size from the rest of your pages. If you plan a print, it's a good idea to use the default margin size, but if you're destined for digital delivery, you may want the imagery full bleed to cover the entire page. The Show Banner checkbox allows you to include or exclude the header or footer in the title page. The title page text checkbox enables a text box on the title page. You may choose to uncheck it and lay out the type in a more sophisticated image editing tool such as Photoshop and only use an imported image for your title page. Title page text can be aligned to the left, right, or center of the page. The horizontal offset value bumps the text right or left, while the vertical offset bumps the type up or down. Like the banner font options, you can customize the font, size, and color, as well as override the type with the document's file name. The title page image checkbox allows you to add an image on the title page. Simply drag and drop an image onto the drop zone to import it, or control click to import or remove the image. Image scale allows you to scale the image up or down, and you can choose to justify the image on the right, left, top, or bottom of the page. Additionally, you can set the image to background to fill your title page with the image. Finally, the horizontal and vertical offsets bump the image up, down, left, or right for precise alignment. Boardfish Preferences menu gives you the ability to modify the Boardfish user interface's color scheme and attribute sizing. For the most part, these values never need to be changed, but we give you the ability to customize the look of the app just in case. If you decide to change these, you can always return to the defaults by clicking on the Factory Defaults button at the bottom. The File menu contains standard file menu options such as creating, opening, saving, and reverting documents. When you complete your boards, the export to PDF item is used to save your boards into a cross-platform PDF file for digital delivery or additional editing in a PDF application such as Preview or Adobe Acrobat. When a panel is selected in the grid view, the Replace Panel item can be used to navigate to another image in the finder which will replace the selected panel. The Insert Empty Panel item is used to insert a blank panel after the currently selected panel. This is a great way to push panels down the document into a new page, or it can be used as a placeholder for a panel coming at a later time. When a panel is selected, Show in Finder allows you to reveal the location of the source image in the finder. The Print item is used to pull up the print dialog to directly print from Boardfish. The Edit menu contains standard edit menu options such as Undo, Redo, as well as the ability to hide and unhide panels. In addition, the Spelling and Grammar section can be used to spell check the text in your captions. The View menu contains options to customize the UI's view. By default, Boardfish is set to Animated Previews. This makes the UI responsive with animated reflowing of panels, 
but we sacrificed preview quality in exchange for this performance. This fast preview mode is only affecting the preview and does not affect the final exported PDF or print, which will always output at full quality. If you would like to see the full quality version of the UI without animated panels, you can switch to accurate previews in the view menu. Additionally, the view menu provides options to automatically resize your grid view, as well as zoom in, zoom out, and enter full screen mode. Finally, the help menu brings up the Boardfish documentation in case you ever need help with specific questions. Thanks for taking the time to watch our guided tour, and we hope you enjoy using Boardfish as much as we do.